good morning, good day uh, to ev everybody uh, listening to this uh, webinar series of sustainability from the International uh, Magnesium uh, Association. Uh, we have about one and a half hours scheduled for that. We have a very compact uh, program with uh, high profile uh, speakers and very interesting uh, information ahead. Uh, the, the title is a little bit exaggerating, but it's the challenge of global magnesium primary production and how the industry eyes to net zero. Uh, the whole industry uh, and all industries connected to our industry uh, on the way to uh, decarbonize and, 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 and everything. Uh, so the uh, magnesium industry has to play ball with it and uh, be on the forefront of it. Uh, and be certainly a, a part of it. That's why we are running uh, this uh, webinar series. And uh, you will also hear later about our sustainability uh, tasks and uh, actions in, uh, in general. Uh, a little bit of the housekeeping. Uh, we will run this uh, uh, web webinar with Q&A. The Q&A is enabled. So you can ask questions during the uh, the session. Uh, well, if there's time, we will try to answer it uh, after each presentation or the presenter can actually answer it uh, in the chat. Uh, or if there is no time left, we make sure that we uh, come back with, a, with an answer to you. Uh, the slides are normally uh, shared with the audience and we are recording this presentation, uh, this event in general. And we'll also uh, set this uh, on our uh, IME YouTube uh, channel. Uh, the first time uh, we do this, that we're doing two uh, events per day to enable more people to take part of it. Uh, so this is the, the morning event. And uh, in at 8 o'clock uh, evening CET time, we are running this uh, uh, event again. So if you miss it or if you have any other associates or business partners who would like to participate, they can still participate in the uh, evening. So once again, uh, welcome to this webinar. Welcome in the name of our IMA president, Hartmut Fischer, and of our chairman of the European Committee, Ken White. And my name is Martin Tauber, and I'm the European representative of the uh, uh, IMA. Our first speaker is also, also somebody who is welcoming you, is our uh, chairman of the Sustainability uh, Committee, uh, and I, I welcome uh, Elma Bay uh, in, in the event. Uh, Elma Bay heads the Material and Process Application uh, Complete Vehicle Department at the DLR Institute uh, for German Concepts in Stuttgart. Uh, Elma is also an elected board member of the International Magnesium Association, and as I said, He's the chairman of our newly established uh, uh, sustainability committee. So please, Elma, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, for the uh, introduction today. Welcome also from my side to everybody. So I want to start this uh, webinar about sustainability of magnesium with a short overview about what we are doing in our sustainability committee. Um, the so I'd like to give you a short overview about what we are doing in the Sustainability Committee and what it is, uh, the Sustainability Committee, and also some insights from uh, what, what needs to be done from our perspective. Um, generally, the uh, Sustainability Committee has been um, established two years ago because of the fact that uh, the, the whole industry uh, uh, had a uh, inside that uh, it's very important to, to work close together in, on, on that topic. Uh, since that time, the, the members of the Sustainability Committee, the member count has doubled, uh, and we have a good share from, from different branches uh, so that we cover the entire magnesium value chain uh, uh, worldwide. So you can see on this map on the uh, lower uh, side of the slide, uh, that we have many regions covered uh, in our sustainability committee, which is very, very good. Uh, in the meanwhile, we have established two working groups. Um, 
One is uh, about green labeling initiative with a global matrix system. So we, we work on, on a, a, a magnesium label which shows, uh, let's say, the improvements uh, regarding CO2 emissions, regarding other sustainability factors. Uh, and uh, want, uh, we want to have uh, develop a label which is accepted by the industry worldwide. And then we are also have a working group which is uh, on uh, alternative production methods and energy saving technologies to share information with members uh, that we uh, speed up uh, the transition to, to new technologies uh, with supporting this with uh, uh, qualified information about different opportunities. Um, we developed in this two years a sustainability statement for the IMA. Um, and I, I'm going through this uh, now. So the members of the International Magnesium Association are committed to make sustainability a guiding principle at all levels of operation and to promote the same commitment to the whole magnesium industry. Our mission is to strive to reduce the impacts of greenhouse gases, natural resources by applying more sustainable technologies and using more renewable energy in our production processes to continuously reduce the negative environmental and social impacts within the whole value chain and to strive to improve, improve circular economy approaches for magnesium to make end of life secondary magnesium a useful source of greener material. So I think that's important to know for uh, that uh, magnesium have uh, magnesium industry have uh, uh, came to this commitment and uh, what you will see today on the different presentations will show you that it's not only uh, uh, an empty phrase, but it's uh, something which is really deeply recognized uh, from the industry and from the supply chain, and that many uh, people are strong, uh, uh, really intensively working to, to achieve uh, here uh, uh, significant improvements. Um, where are we coming from? Uh, the, the current situation, what we have documented in our latest uh, LCA study from 2020, showed that uh, the, CO, the average CO2 emissions from, from China uh, uh, were on a level of about almost 21, uh, at almost 22 kilogram CO2 per kilogram magnesium. The world average was a little bit lower. But um, the challenge here was uh, what everybody recognized was that uh, this value represents uh, about 85% of the global production volume. But uh, since 2020, the uh, uh, situation has changed significantly. The mindset has changed. And so we see um, that uh, also in China, uh, a green transition has been initiated. I think it has been also uh, to do with that we talking much, much more uh, about the sustainability topic. We have presented this topic on our uh, uh, annual conference. And so the awareness uh, uh, what the industry is expecting has, has really uh, risen. And so uh, large investments uh, have been announced in China. We have also uh, a large number of new projects globally, uh, which show potential to have a greenhouse gas value lower than five kilograms uh, CO2 per kilogram magnesium, which is a game changer. And we see um, uh, many initiatives. Uh, so what we can say is the current, the, the sustainability topic for magnesium is not a technical issue. It's only uh, an issue uh, in what kind of uh, improvements or new technologies uh, we will invest um, and uh, what, what are we willing to do uh, to, to improve sustainability. Technically, it's not a problem uh, to make magnesium on the midterm a green material. So that's uh, important to, to understand. Um, and uh, it's also a question why magnesium, why we think that it's worth fighting for it. Let's tell it like this, because we know that there is a huge pressure on the magnesium market because of high emissions, but also because of other aspects like uh, the, the dependency on a, uh, uh, on a specific uh, supply chain. So this is relevant, but we need to also 
look on the other side. Why we uh, need magnesium? Um, light weighting is uh, something which is strongly connected with magnesium. And uh, it's not only in its pure application, because magnesium is one of the most relevant alloying elements for high strength aluminum. Uh, the 6000 series, the 5000 and 7000 series are all uh, related to uh, magnesium content. And you will not get high strength aluminum if you are not uh, using uh, uh, magnesium in, in, the, in those alloys. So even if in the application you uh, go to another option, you will not uh, uh, substitute magnesium at all. Um, magnesium, on the other hand, is the choice of material when it comes to the highest lightweight potential combined with other relevant factors like recyclability, costs, and uh, a good available manufacturing processes. And in automotive industry, we have the situation that the lightweight effect, uh, like uh, reduced energy consumption, extends not only to the first use phase, what is typically below 200,000 kilometers, what the car makers are calculating, but it extends to a second and third use phase uh, because the cars are much longer in the market uh, uh, as being calculated by the car makers itself. So at the end, uh, even if you uh, reach uh, uh, with the today's uh, average um, uh, values, you reach at the end uh, a green um, uh, scenario so that magnesium is beneficial on the low, uh, on the, the full lifetime. But when it comes to greener magnesium sources, it's getting even better. So uh, how to, uh, which pathways do we follow? So, um, to, to go into a green magnesium future. So one important thing, what you will learn also later on in the other uh, presentations is lowering emissions in the primary production. Um, the primary producers uh, are really um, uh, motivated to urgently start to develop individual decarbonization roadmaps and to start into greener processes. Um, start to invest in greener processes. Then uh, the regional diversification of the supply chain, which is, for example, supported by uh, 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 European Critical Raw Materials Act and other uh, regulations. Um, they are, uh, yeah, there is something going on uh, regarding the diversification, but it needs to be supported also by the customer side. Um, we think that. Uh, the transition uh, into a greener future will be most successful if customer side is requesting those points from their supply chain instead of looking for substitution of magnesium in some applications. Because uh, uh, looking for substitu substitution will, will, let's say, at the end, um, give you no chance to influence uh, the supply chain anymore. And so at the moment, if you're still using magnesium and uh, thinking about using magnesium, you see that there are green pathways available, but you need to ask for them, uh, 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 that your supply chain is addressing this. Um, so that's, from our perspective, uh, a good chance to, to also uh, support the activities uh, that investments uh, will be funded uh, uh, if, if a, a market demand is, is shown uh, to the primary producers. The other way is, um, the other point is lowering emissions along the supply chain. Everyone in the supply chain is responsible to lower his own scope one and two emissions. That's for sure, that's clear. And it's uh, the, the fact for every industry at the moment. And uh, we see also a large potential in utilizing more recycling material uh, uh, and doing that more efficiently to lower the CO2 emissions of current primary sources. And you see in this table the, the uh, pot, uh, potential effect, uh, how we tra can transform, uh, let's say, even primary magnesium with, with a higher uh, CO2 footprint uh, when we add uh, a, a significant amount of um, recycled material into, into those processes. So that was a short overview, and uh, that's what we are working on and what we are co uh, try to continue working on. And you all are invited to, to be part of this sustainability committee. We, we look uh, 
not only for people in the magnesium supply chain itself, but uh, also uh, on the user side, people which are interested in using magnesium and like to learn and like to influence the development of the magnesium industry into the right direction. If you uh, have this uh, motivation, uh, please contact, get in touch with us, and we are very happy to invite you to our next meetings. Thank you. That was a short introduction about uh, this IMA, the IMA activities, and I hand back to Martin. Thank you, Elmer. Thank you for this uh, uh, brief in, in introduction. And indeed, we are uh, on the, and uh, we have just uh, uh, ran behind the starting line on, on that on the topic. But much is uh, is planned, and uh, a, a, a lot of effort will be ahead of us. Uh, just for a, 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 I see no in in, in the Q and A uh, because of time constraints. I will just uh, give on the floor to our next speaker. And it was mentioned in Elmer's presentation that one part, a major part of carbon footprint reduction, is in the primary production itself. Uh, so we have our next speaker, uh, Ilian Cocknell. Uh, and he will compare uh, the different primary processes and uh, uh, explain a little bit on the development which is uh, happening uh, for new primary development, uh, primary uh, production processes. Uh, uh, Ilian has more than 35 years of experience in mine development and beneficiation of industrial uh, minerals. Uh, and mines uh, in various roles, and he was also the man behind the latest build and still in in uh, in in production uh, magnesium smelter in uh, Turkey. So I hand over to Ilian. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Uh, I hope everybody can see the. Um... My pr presentation, is it okay? I don't yes, know. Yes, everything okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, presentation gives you an, just an overview of the uh, current uh, current uh, processes, and, but there are also uh, new developments uh, worldwide, which is not covered in this presentation. Uh, so, uh, as you know, uh, this is the contents. Uh, first of all, we are starting with world primary magnesium pro uh, production, then the uh, used raw materials, which uh, some raw materials are newly uh, tried to use in uh, magnesium production. And uh, the processes are uh, electrolysis, carbonothermic, horizontal, vertical pigeon, magnetum process, aluminum thermic processes which I would like to give some uh, information about. And uh, the comparison of uh, CO2 footprint of the processes and the short sort uh, analysis. So mm -hmm. as you know, China dominates in, in uh, magnesium, primary magnesium uh, production and uh, some other uh, smaller, uh, uh, smaller uh, capacities are worldwide. I don't know whether USA is still producing, but they still have their plant there. And uh, Russia, Israel, and uh, Brazil, Turkey, Iran, and Canada is also producing some uh, primary magnesium. Most of these primary magnesium uh, comes from pyrometallurgical uh, uh, process, which is dominated by pigeon. And the RIMA process is also within this uh, pyrometallurgical process. And a uh, small part is electrolysis, which e Israel, USA, and some parts of uh, Chinese production consist of electrolysis process. And if you go to the uh, raw materials, there are a number of raw materials which uh, has some magnesium, but mainly in oxide, brucite is uh, could be used very efficiently. Uh, dolomite is dominating the uh, raw materials by producing uh, pyrometallurgical processes, the magnesium. And chlorides, uh, carnalite, and uh, also uh, newly uh, there are some, uh, some developments by using serpentine 
in, uh, for using uh, primary magnesium process in magnesium process. So uh, the processes are uh, like this. If we look uh, to electrolysis, we have a hydrous process and anhydrous process, uh, mainly from brine and the dehydration, or uh, we have uh, adding some seawater from seawater with adding some dolomite, and then uh, we are coming also to magnesium. There might be some uh, differences in the processes, but in general, we can talk about these two uh, electrolysis processes. In carbonothermic process, this also uh, relies on the, uh, sorry, uh, relies on the reduction of magnesium oxide. In this process, magnesium oxide is mixed with uh, petroleum coke or some carbon uh, source. And uh, this is uh, used in reduction and, and uh, at an electrical arc furnace. Uh, there are some some dangers uh, dangers in this uh, project uh, because uh, the magnesium produced should be rap rapidly cooled, and uh, if we don't cool it, it could be uh, some severe actions, and. Uh, there was some attempt uh, to use it in UK, Korea, and USA, but uh, including large-scale commercial operations at the Permanente Metas in California during the World War II. These operations never proved commercially viable, however, due in part the, to the revision of the carbonothermic reaction. Nowadays, new te technologies are under development, aiming at safer, and competitive process. The horizontal region process, as everybody knows, is a, a thermal reduction process, and the, uh, it proceeds as follows. Uh, first of all, we have to calcine the dolomite to get rid of the CO2, and then uh, we are blending dolomite, dolomite with reductant, uh, such as ferrosilicon or aluminum, and then this uh, mixture is heated uh, around 1200 centigrade uh, in a closed vessel under vacuum. And the, conden uh, the vapor of magnesium is uh, condensed in a, a cooled area, which is uh, called chrome magnesium. Uh, after we get the chrome magnesium, we are refining and then uh, casting and alloying this. Here's a, a flow chart of the uh, pigeon process. Here we see the calcination, mixing, then pelletizing. In the reduction, we use natural gas. Here also in calcination, we use natural gas. Then chrome magnesium and then refining. This refining could be done by electricity or uh, natural gas. And uh, here we have uh, magnesium. Uh, this process, uh, this is the Turkish plant, which is built uh, after 15 years. The first one uh, after uh, in Turkey. And uh, here we see the two side uh, furnaces. Here we have the, uh, the retorts, and the other side are also some retorts. Here we see the vacuum pumps and the burners. Uh, some indicators of uh, horizontal pigeon are we use generally 11 to 12 tons magnesium per ton, per ton one ton of uh, primary magnesium, whereas around 2.2 kilowatts uh, electricity, and we, if you use natural gas, uh, that's also around 2,200 uh, 2, uh, cubic meter per ton uh, magnesium. There, as reductant, we use ferrosilicon and uh, flux material. We mix it with uh, fluoride. Water is used as a 
cooling uh, cooling for for cooling the vapor and build crystals uh, this is just uh, not uh, processed water this is only uh, cooling water which ever evaporates uh, and the uh, co2 footprint in horizontal pigeon if they if we use only uh, electricity natural gas uh, and ferrosilicon is around 20 to 25 uh, tons CO2 per ton magnesium. And uh, the development uh, gave us the ver vertical pigeon, uh, which is uh, shown in these uh, pictures. This is on the left side is the bottom of the uh, vertical pigeon on the right side. You see from the top, uh, those uh, retorts are much bigger and uh, the diameters are much bigger. Uh, normally, you can uh, get uh, 25 to 30 kilograms uh, crown magnesium from horizontal pigeon of each retort. Here, I saw 140 kilogram, uh, kilograms of crown magnesium. Uh, the, the efficiency is much higher, so they reduce the uh, carbon footprint according. Those are some illustration of vertical kills. On the top, you need uh, some winch uh, to uh, take the it's quite heavy here. Actually, uh, just again loading from the top and discharging from the bottom. We use here the gravity. Here on the left side, we see the vacuum pumps. These small hoses are the uh, cooling waters. Here we have some uh, better features uh, at reductant and in electricity. So the CO2 footprint is uh, a bit less than uh, than pigeon, uh, uh, horizontal pigeon. But the main thing is the workforce is also less here. Uh, in magnetium process, this is out of date uh, process. It was used, uh, mainly used in, in United States. Uh, this uh, we can uh, consider as a transition from pigeon to aluminum thermic process. Uh, here also the main raw material is dolomite, which is calcined and mixed with reductants. Uh, if we talk about reductants, there we have uh, to consider ferrosilicon and aluminum. Uh, magnesium here is produced in arc furnaces and collected in liquid form. This is the process flow sheet. As you see, we have dollar boxes we are doing as flux, aluminum ferrosilicon. This is blended. And here we have uh, higher uh, centigrades to produce magnesium. Uh, in uh, As you remember, in horizontal or uh, vertical pigeon, we need around 1200 centigrades. And that's also some sketches. And uh, if we come to indicators, we see the huge amount of electricity we use. It's more or less the same as uh, aluminum production. And uh, it's very close to the electrolysis. So the um, costs of energy costs are quite high here. Aluminum thermic process. This is a newly de developed uh, process. In fact, uh, this process is briefly a combination of existing technologies. Uh, here, uh, the main uh, differences is the, after calcination, the calcium and magnesium are separated. So the magnesium oxide is enriched there. The second part is the use of aluminum, aluminum in aluminum thermic reduction as uh, as uh, reductant. 
So here we see the blue line is the input. Uh, we can use aluminum, primary aluminum or aluminum scrap, both of them uh, as reductant. Uh, water is also cooling water, not processed water, natural gas and electricity. But the most interesting thing here in aluminum thermic process is that we are producing magnesium. Beside magnesium, we have three byproducts which we don't have in horizontal or vertical pigeon. In horizontal vertical pigeon, we have only slag, which we can sell or use only in cement factories if it is within 50 kilometers. But here, the calcium carbonate, PCC, dry ice, and magnesium aluminum spinel has great values. And uh, that makes this uh, process much uh, interesting. Uh, this is uh, already published uh, in uh, metallurgical books years ago, but used in magnesium production recently. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a combination of well-known and widely used processes. This process was tested and matured at a large-scale pilot plant that has been active since 2013. And uh, there are uh, in China five uh, new major projects using this aluminum thermic process. And the total capacity of these projects are 180,000 tons per year. Uh, those are the uh, byproducts. If you see, the calcium carbonate is uh, over 95% purity. And spinel, we uh, have around uh, more than 60% and 36% MGO. But in uh, at our recent uh, recent tests, we achieved that aluminum oxide is around uh, 77 7%, more than 75%, and uh, magnesium oxide is around 20 to 25%. This spinel is used in refractories and uh, PCC is used uh, in various products like uh, plastics, uh, paint, and uh, building materials. So what's the uh, advantage of aluminum process? Uh, we have very low CO2 footprint. There's no industrial wastewater discharge. We have very low solid waste. This we can calculate around for a 15,000 tons uh, capacity of magnesium, around 750 to 1,000 tons of slack only. Uh, we can use a local supply of reducing agent. That means uh, if you, the country who is building this aluminum thermic process doesn't have any ferrosilicon production, so they have to import the ferrocircon, but here in the aluminum thermic process, you can use uh, some certain uh, grades of alloy and uh, primary aluminum as reductant. This gives also aluminum, because aluminum is uh, listed in LME, so you can uh, have also the possibility to hedge and uh, control your costs. Uh, Producing valuable byproducts, as mentioned, is a plus. And uh, here you can achieve a higher level of mechanization. Uh, mainly, uh, powered mainly by electricity is also a plus because if you have a green uh, green uh, electricity supply, so your uh, CO2 footprint will be uh, much lower than five tons per uh, ton magnesium. There are some indicators of aluminum thermic. Uh, maybe you, sorry, maybe you notice here the electricity usage is quite high. Seems quite high compared to uh, pigeon process. But please consider that this electricity usage is for all the products, not only for magnesium. It's for also for PCC. Uh, spinel dry ice uh, production. 
uh, as uh, similarly to the pigeon process, we need uh, vacuum here. Uh, the reduction temperature is a bit lower, around 100 centigrades lower than pigeon process. Um, as mentioned, the reductant, uh, we can use aluminum scrap or 90% aluminum, 99% uh, aluminum scrap or 90% aluminum alloy, which is the 1,000, 5,000 or 6,000 grades. And uh, we achieve also a high uh, percentage of utilization rate of reductant and magnesium recovery rate. A short uh, comparison table of indicators. So, uh, uh, as you see, uh, we might have some higher uh, electricity, but there we produce four different products. Uh, I think this is the most important uh, slide in this presentation, the CO2 footprint uh, comparison. In electrolysis, uh, we usually see 10 to 17.7 .7 CO2 uh, per ton magnesium. This could be uh, lower uh, in Qinghai, 5.2, or also in Israel, I think they achieved below eight. In pigeon, they have between 10.5 and 23 tons CO2 per ton magnesium. But for this 10.5, as Mr. Elmar Bey uh, mentioned, uh, we need uh, to, uh, to put some uh, magnesium alloy to the, uh, or uh, recycled magnesium to, uh, to, add also to the um, primary magnesium. And uh, at aluminum thermic process, we achieve below five tons CO2 to ton magnesium. There, uh, if we use aluminum scrap as reductant and have 100% uh, renewable energy, then we are below one. Uh, if you use uh, only primary aluminum, then we are around 2.5. Uh, so if we look a uh, short look, the short look, the salt analysis. So um, in uh, horizontal pigeon, we have low capex, but in electrolysis, in aluminum thermic, uh, we have also low capex, increased turnover because of uh, the byproducts. And reducing agent from local source is an opportunity, of course, and low energy consumption per ton of magnesium is the most interesting part of aluminum thermic production. So thank you very much. And I give the word to Martin. Thank you, Ilan. Uh, we, I see that we have a, one question in the uh, Q&A, uh, Ilan. Do you have a look on that? It's about scrap. Yes, yes I oh. already mentioned this. Uh, we can use 1,000, 5,000, and 6,000 series uh, of, uh, of uh, aluminum alloys. I think it's OK. OK. Uh, thank you again. Uh, if there are no further questions, I will try to share the next presentation, which is uh, uh, presentation from Mr. Dong, uh, Dong Shung Ming. Uh, he's the general manager of Sunlight Metal Consulting from China. Uh, Mr. Dong has been working in the non ferrous metal industry for uh, more than uh, for uh, 36 years and he's an expert in magnesium and aluminium industry and market research. Uh, Mr. Dong is also currently the executive director of the Chinese Committee for. Magnesium and its application, the CCMA, and he also served uh, from 97 to 2007 as the Deputy Se uh, Secretary General of the China Magnesium Association, and he's uh, also a very valid and trusted source for the for the IMA. Uh, let's give me a second to start his presentation because that's a recorded one. Come up in a second. Good morning. 
Good afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to make a presentation here, talk about the new situation and the sustainable development of Chinese magnesium industry. Is it okay? As you know, yes. China is the world's largest magnesium producer, exporter, and consumer, playing more and more important role in global magnesium market. In the past three years have been a special and a difficult time for global magnesium industry. And the market, the crisis of magnesium supply was a hot topic talked about by many Martin, it has stopped. Uh, yeah, the sound is gone. Second, in the long run, Chinese no, meet the sustainability requirement and remain competitive. I try to answer the questions in my report. First, I will brief brief introduce China magnesium industry and the magnesium market in last year. Last year, China's magnesium production was 925,000 tons, down 1.6 year on year. Although there are many difficulties on the supply side, the Chinese magnesium production situation in 2021 and the last year was better than expected. If the magnesium production of China titan plant is taken into account, China's primary magnesium production has exceeded 1 million tons. Last year, China's primary magnesium production accounted for 95% of world's total. During the 22 years since China joined WTO, China has produced a total of 15 million tons of magnesium. This is the great contribution of Chinese magnesium industry for the global magnesium industry chain. Of course, I also want to say the emission of China magnesium smelting are generally generated for the global industry and the economy. Chinese production of primary magnesium is concentrated in Yulin City, Shanxi province, where there are more than 30 magnesium smelters, accounting for nearly 60% of Chinese output. All these magnesium smelters use CB Corp gas as energy. Due to energy consumption restriction and the environmental inspections, magnesium smelters in Yulin were un unstable in last year. China also is the largest magnesium uh, consumer in the world. The last year, the consumption was 442,000 tons. Continued high price have also curbed some domestic consumption. Last year, China accounted for 44% of global total consumption. Next thing. Let's take a look at uh, Chinese magnesium export. Last year, China's export of magnesium conductors was nearly 400,000 tons, an increase of 4.3%. This is a new record high. I believe the large increase in magnesium export in the last uh, two years was an important reason for driving the price rise. 
not to the decrease in China's supply. Since May of 2021, the price of magnesium got into a rising cycle and kept in the uh, and uh, kept in the since May of 20 uh, kept in the one year. Since May last year, magnesium price have entered a, a downward phase. Then I will introduce some new progress in this year. Environmental protection transformation action of union magnesium smelters have made important progress this year. All the semi facilities that didn't meet the requirement had been removed by June 15, 22. Magnesium smelters have stopped or reduced their magnesium production lines from June to September this year. Union magnesium production increased significantly. According to statistics, the Chinese magnesium production from January to September filled by 23%. Export magnesium uh, export of China from January to September. The export 300,000 tons of all kinds of magnesium productors, down by 20.5%. At the present, the union government has approved 15 magnesium smelters to upgrade their semi facilities. This project will not restart production until after the first quarter of next year. At the same time, while the magnesium production had decreased on the demand side, it is expected that the Chinese magnesium consumption will continue to decline by about 10% this year. Therefore, the magnesium market tends to balance and uh, the magnesium price has gradually recovered since the fourth quarter. The market will also remain basically balanced by the first quarter of next year and the price shouldn't change much in the near future. Next, I will briefly introduce some uh, uh, positive factors and new progress of China magnesium. In the past two years, although we had the difficulties and uncertainty caused by COVID-19, and the uh, economic went down. But China's magnesium industry chain continue to accelerate industrial trans transformation. It's moving in the right direction. The magnesium industry chain is highly concerned and uh, the green, green project and ex expansion project of primary magnesium continue to increase projects on the construction and the planet are larger than ever before, and the investors are more powerful. Why does it happen? This is the first based on the investors' optimism about the outlook for the magnesium material and the magnesium market in the future. Secondly, more people find the problem and the shortfall of the magnesium industry and they want they try to improve them and create new business opportunities. The third reason is the support of local government, who still have to rely on their resource advantage to create new economic growth points. I will introduce 
some key project on the structure. Bombay projecting on we both steel and ISN jointly established the Bombay project in Anhui province. The project will have 300,000 tons of capacity. It starts construction in 2021. Bombay will become the world's largest magnesium and alloy integration project. With the support of Bow Group, the project adopts the most advanced technology. The goal is to achieve energy consumption less than 40% of the current industry average and greatly improve production efficiency. Bombay has announced that this new smelter will further reduce the cost of primary magnesium, no lower than aluminum. Bombay plans to start trail production by the end of this year, after project starts to put into production next year. The supply of magnesium globally will be greatly improved and the company will become the leader of the global magnesium industry and the stabilizer of the global magnesium production market. In addition, RSM has two other expansion projects on the construction. One is in Chaofu, Anhui province. Another is in Wutai, in Shanxi province. Union Magnesium Industry Group have a new project. They want to build 200,000 tons of primary magnesium and alloy, which will start product, uh, construction next year. Salt Lake. Salt, Qinghai, Salt Lake Magnesium is continuing to upgrade their technology and the production line. And in their 100,000 tons of magnesium production line will be restarted in the next two years. Some green and the expansion project are also being planned. I have listed some of them here. However, there is much uncertainty about whether this new project will be approved and completed. The main reason is the Chinese government imposed restriction on project with high energy consumption and high emissions, and it is not easy to obtain the approval. From government. Of course, the capital and the market demand are also problems. One positive change is the concentration of magnesium production at large companies. On September 20, China Bob Group have, has become the controlling shareholder of RSM. Then RSM renamed their name to Bob Magnesium. Magnesium. On September, Wuchan Zhongda Group acquired Zhejiang Qixin Alloy, another large state owner company, joining the magnesium industry. Qixin Alloy has three magnesium smelters. It is now the world's second largest primary magnesium producer and the largest supplier of magnesium in gold. The large in companies enter the magnesium smelting industry will increase technology investment, a celebrate upgrading of magnesium smelters, also benefit the stability of the magnesium, magnesium market and the, the application. Next, I will introduce some, uh, share some information about the, about the sustainable development. More attention to energy saving and the carbon reduction 
in primary magnesium industry, with some plans and actions have been carried out. The central government has asked the non ferrous metals industry to reach a carbon peak by 2030. China's carbon trading market is gradually being established and the carbon quota and the carbon tax system will be introduced. According to the new uh, national standard, the energy consumption per unit of the magnesium ingot will be further reduced. Most of the magnesium metals need to invest more in technology upgrade, upgraded. There is still great potential for improvement and uh, enhancement energy saving, emission reduction, and the cleaning the production. Magnesium smelters have to do much more in the near future. At the, the national level, the government will shift uh, from control of energy to control of carbon emission, including the, the total consumption and the intensity. The government has not yet set a special carbon reduction target for magnesium industry, but the requirements are expected to be made in the coming years, including the organization of the carbon emission and the carbon footprints. In 2020, the carbon emission of magnesium industry in Union City was 9.6 million tons, accounting for 5.7% of the total in Union. It is estimated the carbon footprint of magnesium in Union City average at 70. 17. Chinese magnesium industry is, face, is facing enormous challenge in carbon reduction while saving energy. There is an uh, um, urgent need to develop a roadmap for emission reduction. In fact, China's magnesium smelters have, and the research institutions have never stopped the improving and the innovating the in magnesium smelting, has achieved very good performance and already has a lot of technology reserves. I don't have time today to introduce this technology one by one. I can only list some of the name and the title of the technology achievements here. Over the past five years, Magnesium smelters have continued to invest in improve sustainability, including the waste management, quality of productors, safety of the smelter, and the compliance and the responsibility. Now, eight magnesium smelters have successfully certified against the standard magnesium industry specification conditions with a focus on ESG performance on magnesium spatter and mine. In my opinion, the magnesium smelting improvement of sustainability also requires the joint promotion of industrial chair from a technical perspective, most of the energy saving 
and the emission reduction plans are feasible, but they need further investment and may increase the operation cost. These investments and the cost need to be shared by the whole industry chain and market. So I believe it is necessary to establish a global magnitude sustainability standards or ESG standards and gradually implement it in magnesium industry chain, promoting magnesium matters and all industry insiders to improve sustainability through a market-oriented oriented mechanism. We also uh, can learn from experts of the aluminum industry and other industry. ASI is a standard uh, for aluminum industry chain in sustainability. They have uh, over 300 members over the world. We also need to make the one voice magnesium and the industry can play an important role in providing best solution for global transportation, light waiting, energy transformation, and low carbon development. The scientists of China uh, Chinese Committee for Magnesium and its application has completed a research report of fossil energy consumption and the carbon footprint of primary magnesium. According, according to their uh, to the new uh, to their calculation, the carbon footprint of Beijing method magnesium in China lower than the report. Uh, than the RCA report data released by IMA 2020. Scientists uh, believe that uh, when we evaluate the energy consumption and the carbon footprint of structural, structural material, there is that uh, their density factors should be first uh, consideration. This is more objective for lightweight materials. I show you some lightweight application of magnesium alloy. Summary. Finally, to summarize my points of view. Starting from 2024, the primary magnesium production capacity will gradually increase, which can be enough to meet the demand of China of a global industry chain in the next five years. China's magnesium industry cannot leave the world and the world needs Chinese magnesium. Global customers and users should build confidence against the magnesium supply and continue to develop a new application. China's magnesium industry will provide low cost, low carbon emission and the green primary magnesium and the conductors in the new future in the future. Establish a global magnesium sustainability standards and uh, certification system, support and uh, encourage the transformation of the magnesium industry as soon as, as possible. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dong, here on that, in uh, to, uh, taking the effort to uh, record uh, the presentation. 
uh, I myself must say that I have watched it at least three times to to grasp all the in interesting content. And uh, it shows that uh, China is not standing still in the magnesium uh, primary production. Uh, it's marching ahead and uh, it's uh, certainly being continuing the powerhouse of, of, uh, of, of uh, global magnesium and also uh, on the on the on the way to meeting uh, uh, the uh, CO2 uh, ambitions, uh, what the global industry needs. Yeah. So uh, let me introduce uh, Vladimir Kotlovsky to you. He is the chief technologist of uh, Deci Magnesium of ICL Group. And he has uh, expense, extensive 28 years of, uh, of experience in the magnesium industry. And uh, we look forward to a very interesting presentation about uh, the current and the future plans in in Israel. So if you share your screen, Vladimir, then we can start. Yes. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. Just please confirm you can see it. Very good. OK, thank you, Martin. And uh, I'm pleased to take part in this uh, webinar. And uh, I'm going to um, to share with you the presentation with about the uh, the the way we've done the assessment of our current of uh, our carbon footprint uh, of the electrolytic production and uh, also uh, the future reduction uh, strategies and the agenda of the presentation uh, will will include uh, the description of uh, our DSM production process. Next, uh, we will focus on uh, <clears throat> the power station, on the on-site power st station uh, performance and uh, assessment of uh, the, the carbon footprint of the electricity produced there. Then the energy efficiency in the GG reduction activities at the that magnesium plant. And uh, next, the methodology, the methodology used to do the carbon footprint uh, calculation and the future insight about the so-called drop the million decarbonization uh, project. Now, <clears throat> ICL magnesium pictures and uh, well, uh, what makes uh, our location is uh, unique to, to produce uh, uh, to establish the magnesium production in a very efficient and way that allows us to produce uh, quality material is the first of all is the nature as and, um, as you may know uh, it's not only the concentration of the dead sea that is uh, almost uh, 10 times more than the regular uh, sea and i mean the salt content but also the composition of the dead sea water uh, where the magnesium chloride uh, content is uh, much, much higher than uh, than all the other uh, salts. And again, relatively to, to the, uh, in comparison to the uh, regular sea water is um, much higher. You can see it's uh, 46 gram per liter versus 1.3 gram per liter. Now it's about nature. All the rest is up to us. The ICL, um, as a uh, <clears throat> concession over, over this uh, area in the, of the southern part of the Dead Sea and uh, also the evaporation ponds. The green line is the borderline between Israel and uh, Jordan. The other side, uh, the Jordan side, also has uh, uh, industrial activity and uh, over there there is an Arab uh, potash plant. Now, uh, by far, uh, the main product of uh, the Dead Sea uh, site is a, is a potash. Um, we pump uh, the, the Dead Sea water from the southern part of the Dead Sea through uh, uh, the, the channel, and then the water goes uh, through the evaporation ponds, where, first of all, we settle down the uh, sodium chloride, which is actually not needed for almost uh, anything. And then there is a carnalite evaporation pond where, where the water uh, got even more concentrated. And uh, at the bottom, we have carnalite settling, which is harvested by barges. 
by barges and then sent uh, to the potash production plant and partly to the Dead Sea magnesium, which use like uh, only 5% of the total uh, carnalite harvested. Now, um, the Dead Sea industrial uh, site includes uh, many production uh, facilities and there is a high synergy between all of them. I, I can hardly imagine the Dead Sea magnesium like uh, ours with our technologies being stand alone without any connection with uh, all the rest. We have a power station uh, on site which supplies uh, electricity and, uh, and steam to, to all the, the customers. Of course, there is a backup from, from the grid. Um, magnesium plant uh, uses the carnalite, which comes via uh, the potash production. After the composition of magnesium uh, chloride, we get a residual um, or spent electrolyte, which is has a um, mineral uh, formula of sylvanite. Um, almost all of it is it's potash, so we, we send it back to the potash production. On the other side, we have a chlorine. Uh, chlorine is a very, very valuable product. Um, together with another chlorine coming from the classic uh, chlor alkali facility, all of it goes to the bromine for the bromine production. And the bromine production plant is actually the biggest in the world in terms of the elemental uh, bromine manufacturers. Also, different uh, salt uh, types, uh, cooking salt, or magnesium chloride, uh, deicers, and uh, others. If we focus on the magnesium plant uh, itself, so it all starts with the carnalite processing. Actually, it's a mechanical uh, separation of the uh, of the carnalite crystals from, from the slurry. The product is a wet carnalite. Then um, some energy needs to be used in, in form of uh, natural gas in the fluidized bed dryer. We dry out all free water and almost all um, crystalline water. Next step is called this chlorination, but uh, actually the chlorinators are uh, facilities where we melt uh, the, the material and also use some uh, internally cycled uh, chlorine, much less than in all other known um, electrolysis um, uh, plant, uh, be it uh, USMAC or former Norsk Hydro uh, or others. Um, Three uh, core products together come from the electrolysis, as I said, chlorine, crude magnesium, and the uh, spent electrolyte or sylvanite. Magnesium will be refined and then cast uh, as uh, standard purity magnesium or high purity magnesium or magnesium alloys. Chlorine needs to be purified and then liquefied and then sent as uh, in liquid form to the neighbor bro bromine plant. Next, we will see what happens what happened in uh, the um, power station, which is a crucial to understand the, the relatively low carbon footprint uh, of uh, magnesium. We have actually two, uh, two power stations, the old one and the new one. On the lower part of this slide is uh, the old plan, uh, which is based on the classical uh, boilers type um, <clears throat> Facilities, first of all, is the steam uh, produced and then the steam is used in the steam turbine to, to generate uh, power. The new one is based on the gas turbine, which um, gives power directly after the gas turbine. And then the, the, the heat is, uh, is used to, to generate more steam and again, the same, the, the steam is used in the steam turbine to produce even more uh, power. And uh, of course, all the steam is used uh, uh, internally and it's done in a very efficient way uh, by means that not only uh, the steam is used in steam uh, exchangers, but is used as, as is to, uh, to heat up uh, solutions. Now, uh, it's, uh, the question is how do we allocate all these emissions between, between the electrical power and heat uh, source and the heat uh, power as, uh, as steam? Here we uh, gave, uh, have some uh, valuable advice from, from known standards. In this case, it's a British standard uh, 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 past to, uh, 2015, but also other standards give more or less the same same idea to allocate or to share the emissions based on the energy value of uh, electricity and steam. 
it could be uh, 2.5 to, to 1 in, in the boiler uh, type uh, combined heat uh, power station or 2 to 1 in case of turbine uh, based uh, CHPs. So we have both. So we calculated uh, the, the carbon uh, footprint for electricity for both of them. The results are pretty si similar, um, but most of the electricity we, we generate in this in the new one, and the old one we just shut down the, the less efficient uh, uh, units. So uh, they are fairly, uh, you can say they're almost the same, 0 0.21 or 22. Uh, just to, to compare to the grid um, electricity, which is usually um, at least twice more. In Israel, it's uh, 0 0.5. In I think in the US, uh, the figure is similar. In the Europe, is a little bit more. So uh, you can take it as uh, almost 50% less than typical um, uh, power grid. Now, what other activities uh, were uh, implemented in the magnesium uh, plant uh, to to reduce uh, to improve the, the power efficiency and uh, to reduce its uh, gas uh, green uh, GG gas uh, releases? First, uh, of course, it was conversion of the power station of old power station to the natural gas, 2009. Then we converted all our uh, FBDs to nat natural gas as well. A new electrolytic cells in, uh, since 2012, we, uh, we introduced a new design aiming to reduce the anode cathode uh, distance, uh, this way reducing the resistance of the electrolytic cells. Uh, since 2013, we launched the energy efficiency program. Um, new cogen power station started in, two, in 2018. Um, in 2021, we got uh, the ISO 50001 certification aiming to the to proper uh, energy uh, management. And Green's Dome project uh, launched last year. This is a project that uh, aims to full site decarbonization. Now, ongoing activities is to replace the HFC gas, cover gas to SO2 in the casting house, as well as the replacement of uh, all F gases, so called F gases, which are freons uh, used to water and uh, chlorine ch chillers. We built a dashboard to monitor all our GEGs. Now, we want to focus this year and next year uh, on motors and power energy efficiency specifically to, uh, to convert them to variable frequency dryers. Um, uh, usually people do it uh, in oversized equipment. Uh, in these days, it looks like uh, it uh, has a relatively short uh, return on investment. Also cross-site waste heat utilization in magnesium, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, thermal waste heat, but we use electricity, so it makes sense to share with uh, our neighbors and also purchasing green electricity. Now about carbon footprint uh, assessment. Uh, first of all, um, before approaching to, uh, to this task, you need to, to establish your <clears throat> boundaries and decide uh, exactly what you are going to, to measure. Uh, scope, one, scope one and scope two is a... Uh, is, uh, um, is a must, uh, something that uh, obviously needs to be done, both uh, direct and uh, indirect releases from electricity or, or, or direct um, chemical um, processes. But we also included uh, something from scope uh, three and direct, uh, purchased goods and services. We took everything that might contribute more than 1% to the total carbon footprint, be it um, uh, refractory uh, lining materials or uh, graphite uh, electrodes, anything that um, could be relatively energy intensive is also included here. So we've done this um, assessment using both uh, pass, both Brit British pass uh, 2015, uh, also the ISO standards. And the first question that need, need to be addressed is how to allocate the total uh, carbon emission between all between those three uh, co-products. In our case, it's a magnesium, chlorine, and uh, and silvanite. 
So the idea and the, the guidance by uh, all these two uh, standards is first of all to ident identify the sp a split of point, the point where uh, those co-products be become separately identifiable. In, in our case, it's easy, it's an electrolysis step. Uh, and uh, after that, um, the process is divided into sub-processes, for example, the chlorine liquef liquefaction or a uh, sylvanate uh, granulation or um, casting house uh, activities. So in this case, they are, um, they are assessed in the separate way and everything that is before the sp uh, split of point needs to be shared between all three. Uh, and here there are several approaches. The most straightforward uh, approach is to do it by physical allocation. Usually it's done when the co-products are similar. For example, you can start with milk and then produce um, um, sour cream and, uh, <clears throat> and butter. In this case, it could be done, the allocation could be done by physical allocation. It's not appropriate in our case because the, the, the final products are very different. So. Uh, here we go uh, to do it. We are going to do it by uh, economical uh, allocation, and uh, in this case, it uh, looks uh, uh, appropriate, and uh, it uh, was approved by the <clears throat> by the third uh, party uh, company that uh, issued our as a certificate. Uh, so the final figures using this approach is uh, magnesium is about uh, seven kilo. CO2 per kilo of magnesium and all the others get much less uh, uh, CO2 uh, equivalent, but it's, I guess it's less relevant to, to, to our case. And um, um, well, the certification uh, says that uh, actually it was done using two standards, both PASS and both uh, ISO standard. And um, um, well, if we look at the breakdown of um, what what the main um, parts of uh, the, the the carbon footprint, uh, of course, it's uh, electricity taken about uh, fifty seven percent, then the thermal source of the natural gas, also lime that is used to in the treatment uh, of the flue gases. Now, uh, if I have time and uh, I can touch uh, uh, the, the future project, which is the, which is called uh, Green's Dome, um, the project of the full decarbonization of the entire site. The entire site releases is uh, about 1 million tons uh, of uh, CO2 equivalent. We have a slogan, drop the million. Um, well, I'll skip uh, the slides about the ICL. In essence, we are talking uh, about In essence, we are talking about the installation of a um, PV field of uh, at least 10 square kilometers uh, in the northern part of the evaporation uh, ponds to be, to be able to supply uh, about 150 megawatts on the average. To do it, we need um, about one giga peak uh, PV. And also to, to establish facilities to um, to store the energy. We have a lot of sun in this area, but very little wind. That means uh, uh, the night uh, uh, green electricity is not available. And also in the, in the winter, in winter it could be uh, uh, we could face shortage. That means that the electricity must be uh, first generated during the day and then stored to be used uh, uh, at night and the, in, the, in the winter. Uh, well, uh, in yeah, I'll skip all this part. You could, you can see it, but in in general, uh, the system will look like this. First of all, this is a green energy generation from um, from the PV field. Some of the electricity will be um, consumed directly after converted uh, conversion from from AC from DC to AC. Part of power will be used to generate hydrogen uh, to be to be stored and then used um, uh, in in the converted uh, power station. And part of the the power will be used to to produce uh, heat and store it uh, in the um, solid type um, 
storage uh, system, and then of course used when whenever needed. Uh, two possible routes, AC or DC. We tend to to do it in the AC way. Uh, electrolyzers, um, hydrogen electrolyzers, not the magnesium ones. Uh, we currently we tend to to use the alk alkaline electrolysis, which is has technical ready readiness uh, level of nine, but probably something else uh, else uh, will pop up in the future. Um, yeah. Um, there, is, there will be two steps. The first step is aiming to reduce, to achieve 50% um, CO2 reduction. To do it, we need to install the solar field on the location where I showed you to install base battery um, energy storage system, thermal energy store, storage system, and uh, all the peripheral uh, equipment, and of course, the power, power line. Now, when we when up to the 2050 uh, scope, the difference is installation of the hydrogen um, electrolyzers to, to generate green, uh, green hydrogen and also to add some, some other equipment like uh, electrode boilers and uh, others. All in all, uh, after the technical economical study that's already done and proved the, the feasibility of this uh, study, uh, we are aiming to, to start the basic design until the end of this uh, year. Here are the, all the steps of the, of the projects uh, to be finished up to 2030. And this is uh, the currently uh, what we have approved uh, on the management level. And the next steps, as I said, will be uh, will be adding the, the, the green hydrogen facility. Well, as it looks now, it's a really it's one of the world largest industrial green efforts. Usually, industry um, uh, wants that some energy supplier or government uh, to, to 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 supply green uh, energy. In our case, the company decided to lead uh, to lead this uh, project by by ourselves. And uh, yes, it looks very ambitious, but uh, by no means it's not imaginary. Thank you. We still have one presenter to go, and I hope you will all stay on with us. And I would like to invite uh, Mohamed uh, Abdelaziz uh, to present the NEON project, uh, which is the Innova Desalination uh, Brine Processing Complex in Saudi, which has been already mentioned by Vladimir. So, uh, Mohamed, thank you for joining us, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. I'm uh, sharing my screen now. Hopefully you can hear me and see my presentation. There we are. And slideshow. Yes, very good. Perfect. Well, first of all, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I join you today from Neom region in uh, Saudi Arabia, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, excited to be here and uh, thankful for the opportunity uh, to share information about the uh, project that we're currently developing at uh, at uh, uh, Neom, in my humble opinion, it's uh, the most exciting magnesium metal production uh, project in development at, at the moment. Um, maybe we'll, what I'll do is I'll uh, we, we've heard from from a number of our, sp our speakers today about the different technologies available for primary metal production. I'm just going to recap uh, some of the different technologies that we've evaluated as we uh, continue our development process for for this uh, for this project and and the uh, selection of the technology and and the rationale behind uh, the technology as you know uh, the title of of this webinar series is uh, is the uh, achieving a net zero a goal of net zero and uh, this is our approach to addressing that sustainability uh, aspect for primary uh, magnesium metal production Currently, uh, magnesium metal is primarily produced through the thermal reduction, also known as the uh, the pigeon process. Uh, and we've seen uh, from uh, some of the previous uh, presenters, we've heard from Elmar and Ilhan, uh, different metrics in terms of the uh, CO2 and CO2 equivalent emissions for the uh, the uh, the pigeon process, which accounts for about 85 to 90% of the, of the current global uh, production. 
Uh, we're looking at uh, CO2 equivalent emissions, uh, you know, again, depending on the studies you look at, anywhere between 20 to 30 kilogram of CO2 uh, for each uh, kilogram of primary metal uh, produced. Again, it, it depends on, on, on uh, the different studies that you reference. Uh, a lot of that emission happens from some of the upstream uh, activities, such as uh, the production of ferrosilicon or the calcination of, uh, of dolomite. Um, we understand that there's some advancement in the in the pigeon uh, process that is currently taking place. Uh, you know, we've heard the, uh, the the switch from horizontal to vertical, etc. Uh, and there's a pathway to reduce that emission. Uh, likely below the 20, uh, you know, somewhere from between 15 to 20 uh, kilogram of CO2 for, for each uh, kilogram of metal pr uh, produced. Uh, other approaches uh, av available, um, we're familiar with the, um, uh, the electrolysis we've heard from Vladimir, this is the, the, the technology of choice at uh, Dead Sea Magnesium. Uh, electrolysis has a potential to reduce that output and we've heard uh, the, the uh, metrics from uh, from Vladimir they're at, at around seven uh, kilogram per uh, for each ton of, for each kilogram of magnesium produced. Um, there's also further uh, pathways to reduce that even further if you rely on green energy production, uh, which is the approach that uh, we have uh, elected to pursue at uh, uh, at the uh, Neom uh, for our Neom project. Uh, the Neom region. Um, and I'll, I'll go shortly in, in the next slide, I'll do a bit of an introduction about the about the Neom region and the, and the vision uh, behind it. But uh, the, the Neom region, uh, the, one of the visions is to, to be completely powered by 100% renewable energy um, by 2030, which allows us to um, make benefit of, the, of that green uh, energy production. Uh, our current targets for uh, CO2 equivalent um, uh, production is around 1.1 to 1.2 kilograms of CO2 uh, for for each uh, kilogram of primary metal uh, uh, produced. Um, other technologies are, are available, and we have heard from from Ilhan as well uh, this uh, earlier this morning. Uh, the CTR or the carbothermal reduction uh, technology is currently in, in development, and um, uh, over the years, it's been it's been trialed at a commercial stage, but I believe there are a number of uh, solutions or technologies that are currently being developed and and uh, are on, underway to uh, to get to commercial uh, stage. For uh, Neo, uh, our approach here is or our our, um, our project we're looking to be producing uh, in the in the range or in the neighborhood of one hundred eighty thousand uh, tons uh, per annum of green uh, magnesium metal. So before we uh, we 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 jump into uh, more about the project, I'll give a little bit of a, a briefing on what is Neom, and I'm sure uh, you might have come across uh, the, one of our media campaigns uh, is actually titled "What Is Neom." So if you do a, a Google search on that, uh, you'll get a lot more information about uh, but about Neom. But in summary, um, Neom is a um, region uh, in northwest uh, part, uh, part of uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, in terms of relative size, it's similar in size to the country of uh, Belgium. Uh, the location is strategically selected uh, in the northwest uh, section of, of Saudi Arabia uh, and on, on the Red Sea. It allows us to, um, uh, you know, a number of different uh, benefits of, of being located there. Um, the uh, one of the important factors is that uh, we are at the crossroads of, of the world. If you think about uh, uh, the different uh, shipping routes uh, to get product in and out, um, Neom is intended to be a a, um, a, a region which uh, allows for uh, involvement of, of uh, as an economic uh, as a, an economic zone. Part of the vision for uh, Neom, um, it, it's not intended to be just a project for Saudi Arabia. It's intended to be a project that invites the world uh, to think differently and uh, do differently in terms of uh, supporting sustainability, uh, innovation, and, and business development throughout uh, the region and, and 
and across the uh, globe. As I mentioned, one of um, major elements or crucial elements of Neom's vision is the sustainability and responsible production of, uh, of products. And primarily what the driver for our magnesium metal production is uh, linked to the production of fresh water for consumption. Um, North, uh, Saudi Arabia is primarily a, a desert um, and uh, to support the continued growth of the population, industry and food production, uh, the need for fresh water is uh, is required. Uh, the best approach in, in in this part of the world in terms of uh, producing that that uh, that water is is through the desalination. In uh, most parts of the world where desalination occurs, the typical approach to dealing with the um, uh, effluent uh, brine is to discharge it back into the sea. But uh, Neoma's vision is a little bit different. Uh, we do have a strong uh, element focused on, on the responsibility aspect. And um, we've adopted, or Neom's adopted, the vision of zero liquid discharge, which uh, means um, any brine effluent that we, uh, we produce as part of the desalination, uh, our approach is to valorize and uh, turn that into valuable products that we can, uh, minerals and products that we can sell uh, in the region and globally. Uh, there are a number of different products that we'll be producing. We've, uh, you know, associated with our desalination, we have a brine processing facility, uh, which I, I work in support, in support of this project. Uh, we will be producing multiple different products. You've heard earlier from Vladimir as well. Uh, you, know, you have potassium production, you, you have uh, certain magnesium production, and, and uh, you can't get away from, from producing salt as well. So um, in overall, there are a number of different uh, uh, products that we are producing as part of uh, our brine uh, management uh, approach. In addition to creating these uh, these products, this also supports Neom's vision of uh, developing a circular economy uh, and producing green products that we can support the local region and uh, and the rest of the uh, the world. Um, based on on that, obviously, magnesium is one of the valuable products that we can uh, metals we can produce. And uh, as I've alluded to already, um, our current approach to uh, producing um, our primary magnesium metal is through the electrolysis process, which um, heavily relies on electric power um, and uh, tying that with our 100% renewable energy goal, uh, it allows us to minimize our carbon footprint from, from uh, the production of primary uh, magnesium uh, metal. Um, in terms of uh, the benefits that Neom sees in terms of the uh, of, of uh, bringing this project or the, the continued development of, uh, of this project uh, is the ability for us to develop uh, a long-term supply of magnesium metal uh, and make it available to the uh, uh, to the region as well as the rest of the, of the, of the, uh, the world market, um, and we're doing so in a sustainable manner. We're producing magnesium uh, metal through dealing with a brine effluent stream from, from a, a, for an upstream uh, uh, process. And we're gonna do so using an electrolytic process which relies, uh, as, as I mentioned, heavily on electric power, uh, which we do intend to uh, power with 100% with renewable. Uh, Saudi Arabia is, 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 a, is, a, is a strategic location for, for solar energy. Uh, as well as uh, we happen to be in a, in a wind corridor that allows us to generate uh, electricity through uh, through uh, wind power. Uh, this, uh, with the production of our of our magnesium, our primary magnesium metal, it allows us to support uh, industries such as the automotive industry who have uh, certain targets in terms of meeting. Um, their, their, the uh, car carbon reduction, decarbonization of, uh, of, of their uh, facilities and products. The uh, volume of product we're producing is, as I mentioned, 180,000 tons per annum. Uh, this will allow for a sustainable and um, uh, 
uh, a stable supply of uh, product to support uh, the various uh, industries that rely on uh, uh, magnesium metal. Another aspect that we're looking to secure is a um, uh, we're looking at uh, stable energy pricing for the long for for long uh, period for the duration of, of uh, the life cycle of the project, which allows us to stabilize the uh, the, the the cost of production of uh, magnesium metal. So this should also solve the issue where we've seen the, the high fluctuation and volatility in the magnesium metal, which uh, has been linked directly to energy costs. So I'll summarize um, some of the points I've made already. Uh, the, our our Neom project is uh, is not just a project for, for Saudi Arabia. It's intended to be a project for uh, the world where we can incorporate the best in class technologies um, and allow us to achieve our, which allow us to achieve our sustainability targets. And um, I say that as, as an invitation to uh, many of the global partners and players in the, in, in the industry um, who might be, have an interest in terms of the our prior, Brian, overall Brian processing uh, or Brian management uh, process and, and uh, more certain uh, and, and more uh, focused on magnesium production. Uh, we are working with a number of different uh, partners from across the world, bringing the best in terms of uh, new technologies that are available. Uh, innovation is a key aspect at uh, NEO and, and certainly for Inoa and in our Brian management process. Um, so this is an in invitation to um, uh, the uh, industry players who are uh, have a technology that they believe could be valuable for for us to to utilize in, in this uh, development, uh, but also uh, in terms of the overall um, supply chain, uh, certainly we uh, have been in touch with many of the potential off takers. We understand there's a number of different. Uh, regulatory advancements that are happening in different parts of the world to uh, help the, uh, the the magnesium and the critical raw material or critical raw metals to uh, minimize or reduce their overall carbon footprint. Um, so we um, leave that. Uh, I'll leave that uh, with uh, with you. If, and certainly, there's a lot more to to share and, and about our project. And happy to discuss in in more uh, more detail. Um, if there are any, uh, you know, downstream value add product partners that uh, are interested, um, you one other thing to note as well with uh, with the, the recent development in Neom and, and across the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is uh, a number of different partnerships are are evolving or developing. Uh, one of the more recent announcements that we've heard, um, Hyundai Motors is uh, planning to. Uh, develop a uh, production facility, manufacturing facility. So there could be an opportunity for some of the downstream value add uh, partners that uh, could uh, leverage some of the uh, benefits here. And you know, I'll, uh, I don't want to take up more of everyone's time. I, I want to uh, thank uh, you for your attention and your participation this morning. And I'll hand it back to, uh, to Martin. Thank you. Uh... Mohamed, for the uh, interesting, encouraging presentation and the huge outlook of what is happening uh, at your part uh, uh, in, in, in the region, seeing the complete name project once in a, in a presentation, it's really huge what's, uh, what's uh, going to be established. Uh, well, you have said it already, uh, we have uh, uh, significant time uh, spent uh, today uh, or, or, or almost uh, 30 minutes than, longer than planned. But I think we had a very dedicated audience uh, and we had uh, outstanding uh, presenters and presentations. So uh, I may thank you. Thanks uh, for uh, the presentation. Thanks to participants who will make sure that, sure that the slides will be available in short uh, uh, time uh, and the recording will be also available. Uh, most of the presenter I will see in the evening session at eight o'clock uh, our time. Uh, and then I just want to make some announcement about our next webinar, which will take place on the 6th of December, and it will cover a global issue of magnesium uh, recycling. So thank you very much for uh, your time. I hope you found it interesting and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.